Hey guys, welcome back to Mom Brain. I'm Daphne. And I'm Ilaria. And today we are very excited to welcome a very special guest on Mom Brain. We are talking with the one and only Jennifer Garner. I'm so excited. Um, you know, we all know that she is an amazing actress, but she is also an, a producer and an entrepreneur. She is extraordinarily wise. There's some laughs. Um, we're going to talk about her um, her organic food line, Once Upon a Farm, which I'm a huge fan of. And her work to feed children during the pandemic with Amy Adams and Save the Children, her involvement with Camp by Walmart. She's doing so many wonderful things. And I think, you know, talk where we feel like we're in quarantine and it's a little groundhog day every single day, she is looking out and she is saying, how can I, how can I give during this time? And not just give to my, my home, but how can I reach out and, and help other homes and other people who might not have the same resources as I do. She's also going to teach us about her revolutionary muffin cake mm -hmm. and also share an incredible list of great children's literature um, that she loves and that I'm so excited to scoop up. So without further ado, here is our amazing conversation with Jennifer Garner. Do you, I know you, between the two of you, don't you guys have four, I'm, four and fifth on the way? 600 children. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so do, you have, right now. do you have teenagers yet? No, my, our, both our oldest, mine, our, both our oldest is six. Mine's almost seven, our oldest. Oh my but, gosh. But I know there it's just a wow. lot of kids. Yeah. A lot. But they're yeah, cute. They're, they're, they're so cute. cute. They're so so cute. you are, I'm, I'm even more, I've always been super careful of, I've guarded my children's privacy as much as possible, which is kind of silly given the world that they're in. But I'm, as, as my eldest is, it becomes more independent i'm even more yeah. careful about right <clears throat> talking no it's herself. it's it's actually interesting and another time i i would love to you know i've i've followed a lot of your your advocacy work um and it's been an interesting thing like my my way of dealing with privacy has been at the, at the beginning i was super precious about it and then we just got so bombarded with everything and then of course my husband notoriously doesn't deal with that well um mm -hmm. and then so what what was the advice that was given to me is just put their image out a lot so the bounty mm -hmm. of the photo goes down and then people started leaving us alone did so, it help oh my god i mean literally we'd have like 50 people outside and they'd get in our yeah. faces and it would get violent and be like horrible. There'd be like, please, it'd be horrible. And now, I mean, obviously we're, you know, in COVID now, so nobody's bothering us anywhere, but it was amazing. But at, uh, you know, I start to think exactly what you're saying. There has to be a point where it's like, you're not cute little babies anymore and they, who don't really care. Eventually they become their own humans and, and they really want to have their own privacy or they want to, and you, and also to teach them what's important and not, not important. So that next. They stage. also just want to, you know, they just are like, well, mom, when you talk about our experience of something, we know our, you know, yeah. we know our experience. You don't really know. You can't speak for me. And so it's just, it's, it changed, you know, it just, it changes, but my experience of parenting them and during this time or any time is a different that's different and that's totally up for grabs okay all right no we just wanted to put that thank you out there. that's I, nice thank you i, worked, I know uh, i'm always like ah, 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 but then I, it's fine once you were really in it once you want it yeah okay good good i'm glad i'm glad yeah. well uh, with that how are you how are you holding <laughs> up how are you holding up with all this craziness um well i think as as well as anyone could be. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's interesting. I was just saying that we all, we are, um, there is really no answer other than lucky, grateful, right. Um, in just the best possible position. And you don't, you know, the, the, uh, right before I talk to you guys, I, I do these zoom meetings with kids over miracles, child, miracle children's network, and just say hi to kids who are stuck in the hospital during all of this. Mm. And, um, I was chatting with them and thought, well, I always just feel like you don't have to look hard for perspective, you know? So yes, we're doing great. And it's also such a roller coaster. I feel like just in talking to my girlfriends or people that I work with, we're all kind of on the same where one week we're all like, 
okay all right and then the next week we're all okay and making plans for making it work and you know coping but it's a trudge isn't it yeah it's hard it's it is it is and that's definitely you know gratitude is something that gets us through every single day whenever we i find that i'm complaining about you know things i'm gonna just like take it back and i'm like it could be so much worse i mean first of all we're healthy we have a home, we have resources. I mean, there's, there's just so many, there's so much to be grateful for. It's hard with, I mean, my kids are, are pretty young, so they love being around us all the time, but they're, they do get to a point where they're like, well, we want to go back to school. And I'm like, I don't think that's going to happen. Or, you know, and, and I try to talk to them about being grateful and that's a little bit more difficult for them to, to, to really grit. I mean, trying to teach a child that this, that what is provided for them, that their reality isn't everybody's reality at a very young age is, is difficult. Yeah. I don't know that. I don't know. I, I have a, uh, I, I think it's kids don't need to know that yet. They're allowed to take that for granted. And as long as you live in gratitude, I really do believe as they grow older, um, it'll all happen really naturally where they will really, I mean, I, I, I know that for all of us, our kids are growing up with, um, you know, in, with a lot of privilege. And I just, um, I think it's hard to, you can't force gratitude. You can't teach it. You can't, you just have to embody it and live it. And then I just think it's one of those things that your children will absorb. Well, you, I love what you said. You don't have to look hard for perspective. I think that's such a wonderfully simple way to remember that, um, that it's all around you, this idea mm -hmm. of, of appreciation and gratitude and, and its corollaries. But I, I'm so curious. So, so we experienced the beginning part of quarantine as a family of 11. It was my parents, my, me and my three other siblings, my entire family, our four kids, my husband, everybody. And it was really interesting I mean, it was like its own weird Brady Bunch, but it was also because we haven't lived all under the same roof for so long, but it was really interesting to see how these different age ranges started to accept information that was coming in and dealt with the blows that they felt in different ways. Um, I'm so curious, since your kids are a little older than ours are, and they are, as you said, becoming more adult and like independent and thinking and have their very strong other you know, own opinions about things. How do you, how did you help them like navigate what I'm sure was a, like in, in the, in the world of teenage, you're not being able to go to school or not being able to see your friends or go to prom or like whatever it is. That's a crushing blow in, in a lot of cases. How do you mm -hmm. help them feel not okay and, and help them cope and, and any ideas for, you know, slightly older children who don't just trust everything that comes out of their parents' mouth as gospel? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, well, it, they didn't always feel okay. It wasn't okay. <laughs> Having to leave, I mean, my, my daughter, my middle was in fifth grade and she had her very favorite teachers in the whole school who had, she had had in third grade had moved up to fifth and she was wow. in that class with her best friend being challenged, being excited. She lived for it and it was a big deal for her. She's very social. That was, it's just, she just had a really hard time. And so now, you know, at the beginning, it was like, what can we do? We would just, every now and then around dinner, you know, when it first started, I kind of started us off and with a, we can do hard things dinner conversation and with a notebook open, I always have one with a notebook open and like, let's talk about what we're going to need to do to be successful. And we're going to need to just be really kind with each other and give each other space. We're going to need to really find ways because they're big enough to, you know, we know that the way to feel better is reaching out. So who in our church, who in our lives can we be giving to in order to feel better? We know that we need to be safe. We're going to clean on Saturday. Like we just made a plan and mm. we didn't always follow it, but it gave us something to go back to. And then it really just sucked sometimes, of course, for everyone. Um, for my, for, you know, a couple of kids were really fine with Zoom and they were just really happy that we were all cozy together. And I have one who's feeling a little more paranoid about COVID. And so it was, um, 
great that we were so closed down and then one who was desperate to get out. So it's just, it's different for everyone. And now it's like, okay, going into the new school year, what are we going to do? How are we going to make this? How are we going to make this work? Because my middle daughter started saying to me, mom, my brain is repelling anything the teachers try to tell me over Zoom. I'm not hearing it anymore. And God bless her teacher who showed up in our driveway to talk her through. Cause she was like, here is wow. this brilliant student, this amazing brain and brilliant student and she's failing everything. Right, and so we right. had to, we had to really, you know, drill down together. How are we going to make this work for her? So it's just, it's just like, it's just not all gonna, you can't make it all. Okay. You know? Yeah. I think that we, I mean, isn't that its own lesson too? I feel like a lot of, and so Laurie and I have been parents for, you know, roughly seven years, call it. And that was like a, a novel moment where you realize that if you've been a highly achieving person or you like type A personality and you thought that, you know, reading a book or like there were a set of rules that you could follow and then you'd get the A, you know, that was very, a very comfortable place to live. And parenting is um, a daily uh, affirmation that not getting every question right or not getting every answer right or not always having the, the solution is sort of par for the course. But obviously this throws everything even into more of a tailspin. But I, I, I'm I, curious because I do think that that's something that is being highlighted for par any parent who has like multiple kids is you see how differently they're all taking yeah. everything in um, and, and trying to remember that you have to be a different parent to each of your children Ugh. is a really crazy deal, you know? Yeah. Um, and I'm, you know, I, Ah, that was, it's not a question. It's more just like a, yes, I agree. <laughs> yeah. And also, you know, every day with parenting is a fresh start to get it right or a fresh mm. start to try something new. It's an experiment. It's like a lifelong experiment in a way. And yes, you can follow the books, but, and I do. And I was definitely someone who, when my first was little, I was very much prepare the path for my child. I was like, you know, oh, she's napping. So everyone be quiet. You know what I mean? Like, yes. and it's not until I had my third that I learned to prepare my child for the path instead of preparing the path mm, for my child. And that is something that I, I heard once. And it's one of those little parenting things that has really stuck with me. Of course, it's going to be hard. Of course, you know, and it's, I feel the same way about resilience that I do about gratitude. You can't tell your child to be resilient. That's so condescending. Like be resilient. Like you be resilient. Why are you telling me, you know, it's, <laughs> why are you telling me that? But you can point out to them, you know, what's happening right now is that you are rising to a really tough occasion. And I am seeing something in you that is, I, I hope you're really feeling proud of because this is not easy and you're doing it. I've been reading so much about that recently. A lot of people are coming forward and talking about how we tend to try to just make everything better. Like, let me just make it better. Let me make you feel better. And then our kids aren't learning how to cope on their own. And exactly that they are resilient in so many ways on their own. If we just step back and we're there to listen and support and be there for things that they ask for, but that actually them learning sort of the arc of difficulty, the arc of pain, the arc of a tantrum, the arc of a heartbreak is extraordinarily important for them to see that they can get to the other side and that they can do it much on their own steam. And yeah. then, you know, talking about depression, you know, rates and suicide mm -hmm. rates and stuff like that, that they're saying that it actually teaching them to sort of sit with difficult experiences makes them capable of being stronger, happier people later on mm -hmm. when things get a little bit tougher. Totally. Yeah. Just helping. I mean, you know, it's the old thing of narrating it for them so that and just showing your own calm about the hard thing that they're going through. Like, yeah, this is. You are, this is awful. I can well, I see. Think, I think that's probably true. To, you know, the same way when your kids are little and they fall down and if you freak out, they freak out. And if you're yeah. like, you're going to be okay, they're, they're okay. Um, but it, it's interesting how, um, how much parents end up setting the tone for how I'm sure kids are internalizing everything that goes on in their daily, in their daily life. And, you know, this current moment being, being a, a very formative one for anyone. Mm -hmm. um, how do you, how do you keep yourself same, calm, happy, like relaxed, uh, whatever, however you replenish yourself. What's your, what's your favorite way to do that? I 
like a routine. <laughs> I really realize I'm getting set in my ways. So <laughs> I like a routine. I, I always start my day <laughs> with a workout. And I, I realize that I'm super spoiled. I've had a trainer for, you know, since I was a peanut. And um, it's just somewhere that I, I, I really need someone telling me what to do. And now I can do it over a class on Zoom or over, um, you know, an app. I can't, I can do it, but I'd like to have some, a buddy to work out with. So the ladies who work at my house, my assistant Mo, who's, um, who quarantined with us from the beginning, um, cause we were doing Sable stories and she, it was just like, she just moved into the guest room and my kids nanny also just slotted right in. So it's actually really fun cause it's, you know, a bunch of women taking care of what needs to be taken care of. And we, the three of us tell the kids you're on your own and we work out together every day. And that's been a huge part of it. And then I have to be doing something that is looking out. I just always feel like, I don't know. It's it's too easy to to navel gaze. I have to have some some kind of focus uh, out in the world and what can I be doing to be helpful? That just makes me feel better. And then yeah, then otherwise it's just a um I don't know if we're allowed to curse on this yeah. podcast. Yeah, but we're, it's a, we're moms. It's a, it's just a <laughs> shit show, you know. It's just like the one kid needs this while the other needs this while you're supposed to be on a Zoom. And today I was on a conference call early and I had two kids who were being funny and they weren't getting that it wasn't a time they could be funny. And they kept trying to yell at the people on the call and I was like, and they weren't getting it. And I had to forcibly scrape them off and go the, you know, it is what it is. It is what, yeah, this, this door, I actually have it locked right now, but like, I guarantee you that my six-year-old is going to try to come in. She literally doesn't, she, Daphne, like every yeah. single time she's, she's, she's like, and this is my time where I get to come in and say hi to everybody at my mommy's work. I love yep. it. And aren't you all going to love that right now? Uh-huh. Yep. But okay, so I didn't know that you are, um, you did what you did or do once upon a farm. Yeah. Do you like I it? I love that. Ladies. <laughs> Do you like it? Tell me you like it. You are a total, you're our like top it. thing. Okay, good. Yes, love. that I'm one of the founding, um, one of the co-founders. Yeah. I, I love that. We've been, I, I, wouldn't, I discovered it maybe is it possible like three, three years ago? Have you guys been around for three yeah, years? Yeah, three years, yeah. And I love it because it feels like real food. It's, you know, for me, um, it was the first thing I had seen that I said, okay, I would have bought this. I would yeah. have used this. This would have really helped me because yeah. steaming and, you know, the whole, and now the, the kids snacking, the dairy free yogurt is with no sugar added and the overnight oats, which you might have to get um, online where you guys live, but those are great snacks for me and my kids love them and they have protein from pumpkin seeds. And so I, I love the company. I love the mission of behind the company. I love the food itself. Um, and I'm just super proud of it. Yeah, no, I love I loved the packaging as well. It did feel like like good. it feels like a fairy tale. And I was like, oh, this yeah. is my house. Oh, and good. No food. And because I'm always trying to, you know, I mean, kids, kids are kids, and they want to, you know, have their snacks, and then, you, but like trying to give them snacks that are good for them. And at one point, like the other day, I was like, no more snacks because you guys have stopped eating meals. Totally. Oh my gosh, it's the I worst. I feel like I threaten that once a week, and then I'm like, okay, if I have some snacks. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, if, they're, like, more into it. <laughs> if they're going to snack you might as well make it fruits and veggies right exactly right and it's still so functional I mean I love you know I love that it's refrigerated I think that um once you start to go down the the path of learning about what they have to do to make shelf stable baby food and shelf stable snacks like last forever and ever it's it definitely makes you um, very grateful to have like fresh refrigerated options and and just helpful no sugar added snacks in general, um, and I I do think that it's you know it's just like it's helpful to as 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 you said it's helpful to have a snack that like as a mom if you need to just eat it yourself <laughs> it yeah not it doesn't suck well if you <laughs> think about the way we've always thought about anything like this whether it's baby food or kids food like this like I would no more have a gogurt. 
I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that. But I would, <laughs> you can, you can, yeah, like this, it's just so gross. Like it's kind of the the trope is how disgusting this kind of food is. But then meanwhile, we all talk about, well, I feed my dog human grade food and it's right. so fancy. And it's like, wait, what is, what's happening here? Why is this? Why can't we just feed our kids real, real food? It's possible. I- and I love that it's, um, I, I thought this was a huge win. I saw this in the news when it happened. A huge win for you guys to be um, WIC, uh, uh, what's the word? Approved, WIC approved. approved. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, be, because I, I have to say, like, being able, I mean, it, you know, it, being able to achieve that level of scale and be able to be mm-hmm. available to families, women, children, infants who desperately need access to, to mm-hmm. any kind of fresh produce and especially high quality fresh produce in a really functional format. I thought it was like, I just, I was clapping for you over here. Oh, thank you. It was so awesome. such a, I mean, it was the reason to get into, yeah. um, to get into business was that, um, and, and th- John Forker and the the other there are four co-founders: um, Cassandra Curtis, Ari Raz, John Forker, and myself. And John's our CEO. And he and I, when we met, he was just an investor, and I was just meeting kind of with an the main in, one of the main investors or somebody I was really interested in because I just wanted to know why he liked the company. It was tiny. It was really they were they were in just a small handful of stores. And when we met, I said, you know, my my issue with it is you can't just be feeding kids in Connecticut and Beverly Hills. There mm-hmm. has to be, you know, there has to be some, you just, you, I've seen too many families in rural America struggling who just don't have access to this kind of nutrition at all or taste or vibrance of color or flavor. Their kids are just growing up without this sensitivity in their palate whatsoever. And I, I just couldn't bear it. And he said, okay, well, I feel exactly the same way. And so we, we had a handshake. I'm in if you're in, and we came in at the same time. And that was our total mission. And now we just have to, you know, cause it's just, it's hard to get WIC approved in every state right now. We yeah. just got California, which is a big deal. And then just making sure Walmart has been a huge partner in it oh, and, and making sure it's available. Yeah. Well, we should talk about on that. And we should talk about camp by Walmart because I know that you're involved in this initiative and it is really exciting. I think there are a lot of families who've been stuck in their homes for a very long time, have yeah. probably run out of creative ways of using like old boxes and toilet paper rolls at this point. Like we, you know, I think that it's such a cool, well, I'll let you tell, tell everybody what Camp by Walmart is, because I, I do think it's, to your point, it's servicing a huge population with really fun, great, engaging content. Oh, great. I, I love talking about this, but first I have to see if there's specific stuff I'm supposed to be saying. Yes, you got it. <laughs> Matthew, is there... You guys, you're not here yet, but just wait. No, I am. I, I, I am because I'm so pregnant. I can't see anything whenever I'm pregnant. And my glasses and my glasses don't work at this point because it's just completely different. So don't don't, don't worry about it. You know, one of the one of the things that you know, going off of what you were saying, Daphne, that I love about about um, the idea is, and I was on the app and I was looking at different um, at different activities. Is like sometimes I'm like what are the best rainy day indoor activities when you can't go out to the store and like do whatever and get like something. And that's literally what it, what it seems to be, you know? And it's like, let me give you some really great ideas. Let me like make it fun by like uh, putting an app with it. Um, and then like the silly, like team names and, and, you know, like s- singing with Idina Menzel and like all of, I know, like, like of course, I mean, all my kids, we do that a million times with all the frozen yeah. songs. So it just is like, it's just a really great idea in the simplicity, yet the wealth yeah. of all of it. Because there's so yeah. much stuff for so much really fun stuff it, there. I feel like Walmart did a great job of using all their their might and power and their ingenuity and um, just fun to um, to offer all of these different experiences for kids. For me. I'm in charge of snacktivity. I'm a snacktivity counselor. So it's a, <laughs> you're, it's, you're doing an activity to make a snack. And um, it, it, the thing that I love about it is that it, there's a real choose your own adventure. It's not just kids being told, 
do this, do this, do this. It's much more like if you want this, then add, add this topping. And if you want this, let's do that. It's fine. So kids have agency in it and they get to participate. You know, what kid doesn't want to push the button on the phone? <laughs> so they get to participate in making the choices. And then at the end, they have a healthy, really fun snack that they're super proud of. What are, what are some of the snacks that you guys have been making? Oh, at home? Well, we did a yogurt parfait in, um, in my snack activity that was so delicious that I came home and had my kids make one. It was, you know, it's yogurt and either granola and then little bits of coconut flakes. And um, I, we've been, you know, just like everybody, we've been baking a lot, but I always bake a lot. So it's nothing really new. Um, but uh, you know what I've done differently than I've ever done before um, is when you make muffins, you make them and you the muffin tins are kind of a pain to clean out. And so <laughs> what I've been doing is I've been making a muffin mix and putting it in an iron skillet, a cast Ooh. iron skillet. And you just, Ooh. I mean, cause muffins, let's face it, are a cake, right. but it's, <laughs> It's just, but they're muffins, so it's, a, a, it's a cake. <laughs> but the fun thing is just trying something in a new way, and totally. uh, it, it's just silly. But having a slice of a muffin cake is very going it, over very well here. It feels it feels very different. That's so funny that you say that because that's literally what I tell Alec. He's like, because I mean, again, a normal life when we are like out and about and in New York and we're like going out and getting our coffee and he'll get muffins. And I, when I say muffin, it's not one muffin, it's muffins. And then he's like, then he's gonna, like, I'm just gonna have a bite of it. And then literally a bite is all of it except for this much. <laughs> not a hundred percent. I am not exaggerating at all. And I tell, and he's always like, this has no sugar in it. Just like, I'm like, how do you know? And he's like, cause it doesn't taste like sugar. And I'm like, well, no, it, it trust me, this is cake, which is nothing wrong with that. But just admit that it is cake. Just it's because cake. it has some blueberries in it does not mean it's, that cake. it's not blueberry cake. It's just Dear cake. Alec. You're yeah. eating cake. It's cake. So I literally no. say it all the time. It's cake. But no matter what, he's just going to continue on with his narrative. Right. So here, <laughs> make him happy. Make a blueberry muffin cake. It. And, um, <laughs> and you'll just, I don't know. It made my, it's like I, we made one today that was cinnamon sugar. Oh, so cake. good. But um, yeah, delicious. So that that's our snack du jour. But there's always, um, you know, we're so lucky to have access to fresh fruits and vegetables. And so there, that's a, that's just such a big one. Yeah. Vegetables. Well, actually, so this is something I feel I have to ask because I'm, I, I feel like I saw a picture of it at some point. You were on like a giant tractor on a farm. And I yeah. can say it was your farm. Do you have yeah. a farm? <laughs> I have a farm. I have, a, well, it's my mom's family farm. Um, oh. And my mom grew up there. Oh, Daphne, come back. I'm my, mom, back. <laughs> my mom grew up in this tiny little rural town in um, Oklahoma called Locust Grove. And uh, my uncle had taken over Uncle Robert and he was living there. My Uncle Robert was a plumber for 40 years. And I called him once I started, um, joined Once Upon a Farm. I called Uncle Robert and I said, do you mind learning how to become a farmer? <laughs> And so he did it. He and my aunt Janet, we have a biodynamic farmer. They're the only organic biodynamic farmers in the area, my uncle wow. and aunt. And so this um they they this this guy Jim comes down and coaches them and then they do it and they uh grow food for once upon a farm. I mean so we, amazing. we add to the produce. I'm actually That's gonna amazing. find my way there and harvest sweet potatoes in a couple of weeks. And I cannot wait, because we have a new tractor and I can't wait to be on it. And I, I love that farm so much. I was gonna ask if you feel like you've, you actually really, I have this fantasy of one day, you know, embracing like the, the inner Martha and going into my farm and having my luscious produce that my, my black thumb doesn't kill and you know, everything <laughs> working out as it should. Um, do you feel like farm life is, is is excellent. Do you, do you love being there? You... There's something so gratifying about growing your own food and yeah. getting your eggs from your chicken. I mean, it just is. It just, it feels good. It feels like, you know, how good it feels when you put a meal on the table. And it's just that much better when you've participated in 
in growing the food. That the last and- time I saw, I'm sorry, I no, didn't no, mean no, to interrupt, no, but no. the last time I saw your dad, Daphne, oh, I was on do? his <laughs> show and they, they, he started asking me like, oh, what do you, what do you like better? And he started asking me all these personal questions about how I felt about Martha Stewart. And thank God I really do love her and was nice about her because he surprised me and had her come out. (gasps) And she came out and surprised me. And I almost had a heart attack because what if I had been like made fun of her? You don't make fun of Martha Stewart. You don't make fun of Martha Stewart. You don't make fun of Martha Stewart. Number one. Yeah. So I was like, Martha, what are you doing here? He said, it's a surprise. And I was like, who surprises anyone for real? That is, you <laughs> pretend to be surprised. But I was really surprised. You can tell him, I said, I haven't forgotten. And that is so- I will let him know the scarring is still very real. It's still right here. It's at the surface. Oh my God, that's, <laughs> that's so that's, funny. I'm horrifying. It's but a- so great that it worked out well. Yeah. I think it's an amazing experience for, for the kids as well to see how food is 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 made and it changed and we have we have a garden here we don't have a farm but we have we have a pretty big garden and then you know I mean I I love to cook so I'd always be in the supermarket you know pre-covid and being like what am I gonna make for dinner and and I would be like all right I need basil and you get like a few sprigs of like meh basil Uh and now I realize they're like it's ridiculous how expensive basil is because basil is so easy to grow and we too much of it. We will never eat that, that and mint and rosemary. We have like so much of this. And I'm just like, guys, what are you, what are you doing in the supermarket? Yeah. And so in, in the city, once we return back to hopefully normal life one day, hopefully I'm totally going to like make one of those like herb gardens, just like in. But you can, and it's just as satisfying as having a whole farm. You just need to grow something something for kids to understand they just need to put a seed in and then, you know, water it a couple times and then have it be something they can eat. And kids will eat mint or kale or basil right off. Anything you can pick yourself, you're so much more likely to eat. Yes. Yes. It can't get fresher than that. Well, I think that you, I think that, you know, we, I, 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 cooking at home, especially right now, Alari and I are both out on Long Island and there are, you know, farmer's markets everywhere and the produce is just so beautiful and it's been reminding me how wonderful it is to feel inspired to to go shopping you know every day roughly because I buy small quantities and just you know just make them that day but to be inspired to create something new to create something fresh to not have to work that hard honestly because the produce itself is so lovely it kind of does all the heavy lift for you and absolutely my kids feel more like we have this rule that, you know, big kids try everything once. So I'm not going to fight with them endlessly to eat the whole plate or eat the whole meal or whatever, but that I want them to feel proud of having the courage, if you call it mm-hmm. that, but really just like the ability to change their habits, the ability to do something novel, which I think humans sometimes have a very difficult time doing, um, is great. And I think that you have done a lot to make sure that cooking is fun in your family and eating together is fun in your family. And, and obviously for many outside your family. Um, but I have to tell you, I've kind of fallen in love with your Save With Stories campaign too, because food, food inspiration I find easy to find. Great children's books and like continuing to stimulate my kids emotionally through wonderful literature feels harder actually sometimes because mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I feel like I pick up all these kids' books hoping, hoping, hoping they're going to be great and they end up sucking. And so like, I, I am so grateful to, I feel like I find great recommendations. My kids love to watch them. I think that it's like, talk a little bit about that campaign and, and why it was so important to you to create. Uh, the night that everything shut down, what was it? The 13th of March, maybe? The 12th of March. The 12th yeah. of March. The Thursday, 12th, the 12th of, March. of March. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Amy Adams March, right called there. me and said, you know, I've really been thinking about the kids who rely on school for food. And this is the area that I work in. I work in rural America and I work in poor rural America. And so, um, and I have for a dozen years and I had just come back from a trip to Eastern Kentucky the week before. And that same week, like as everyone's like, don't travel. I'm like, hang on, I gotta do one more thing. (laughs) And that week I had been visiting um, in Sacramento with Governor Newsom. Actually, I think I had been there that day on the 12th, I think I was with him. As he's trying to shut down the state, we're like, okay, but can we talk about educating kids in the Central Valley and, you know, um, all different parts of California? 
And so this is just like the love of my life is this little job that I have for them. Um, although my kids remind me I don't get paid, but that's the best kind of job. <laughs> um, so anyway, when Amy called me, I said, actually, I can help. I can help you do that. I do know the organizations that can do this. Let's, let's get to work. So that weekend, I just went bananas with my, um, my friends and colleagues at Save the Children. And, you know, we just kind of, we called No Kid Hungry and said, will you partner with us? Because we know that we have different expertise. We have kids that we reach. They have kids that they reach. They probably need help with educational supplemental materials because we know that 35% of kids in rural America don't have access to broadband. And we have, they have, they are, have expertise in helping feed. So we knew that that would be a great match. And then it was, it started off like just with Scholastic. I had a, we have a friend there through Save and calling Billy and saying, can you give us any titles, rights to any titles at all? And then once we got rolling, you know, cause as soon as Reese Witherspoon signed on to something, then you have a little bit of a, of a movement <laughs> cause she's so powerful. And so she's my first call of course. And she, um, once she did it, then I had something to point to, to call publishers and say, can we please have, and then it just got to be so much fun because what I love more than anything are kids books. I could talk kids books all day long. Yes. I need and, recommendations by the oh way. Oh my gosh. At, oh, at the end I, of this. I can totally this. give you recommendations. <laughs> okay, good. And so I was going through, um, just in my mind and like spitting out titles or going through my house and then we were going specifically to publishers saying, okay, here are today's lists. And then I had these awesome books that I would have, you know, personalities, actors, athletes come in and I'd say, oh my gosh, I want you to read this. And then I got to put them together. So it was a lot of letter writing, organizing, posting. We did it all, Mo and I did from my house and all off of Amy Adams' idea. And it was, it was great. We raised millions of dollars. Wow. Wow. I, it's, I mean, it's such a, it feels simple, but sometimes the best ideas are the simple ones that just pair. But I had no idea how much like coordination and rights getting it involved, obviously. Always. Um, Everything's always a little trickier than, than you think it's going to be. But it was, it really kicked quarantine off. It was six solid weeks of working just around the clock. That's why my nanny was living with us because I did nothing. But I was just like, see ya. You know, we were just 100% save with stories. But it, it started us off with so much energy and there was so much positivity yeah. around. It's still up. I mean, it's still up and we're still accepting donations. Believe me, $10 to, if you text 20222, if you text the word save, $10. So that's all. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. And it also, you know, during this time, anything that you can feel like you're putting some positivity into the world you just feel like you have a purpose, you know? There's so many yeah. days with quarantine that it's just like the same, I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna do the same thing over and over and over again. And and having some sort of like purpose and feel like you're having some influence out, out there, even though you're in here, it, it changes your mood tremendously. Well, you guys are doing that. You're doing that here and reaching to mom, reaching moms and talking yeah. about what's going on and helping them get through it. it how are it, you guys dealing with, I'm sorry to interrupt again, but how are you dealing with um, your kids getting along with each other? Is everyone getting on each other's nerves or what do you do for that? I feel like we're lucky in terms of, um, and I guess maybe I can speak for you. It, tell me if you agree, Daphne, because we all yeah, have, yeah. We have the same amount of kids. Um, they, we're lucky we have so many kids so close together because there's built-in playmates. Mm -hmm. Um, of course they also piss each other off. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's amazing because like my, so my, my oldest two are 21 months apart and they're either like the best friends or the worst enemies and it's girl boy. So mm -hmm. I have girl boy, boy, boy. And, um, I know she feels very angry about it. Um, but anyway, so she's, you know, they, the other day they were playing and I'm sitting there and I'm watching them. And I'm like, yes, this is what I want it to be. I don't want you guys to be fighting all the time. And I'm just thinking like I'm having this whole thing in my head. And then they start screaming at each other and I'm like, whoa, what just happened? But I don't get like too involved. And then they like sorted it out. And then they were like best friends and hugging again. So I feel like it's just so much, but then I have like a three-year-old and my three-year-old, I mean, three is a tough age. So it just, it really oh. just depends. I've got a three-year-old and a two-year-old. I mean, that's just oh. like, 
I know. I know. I had three boys in less than three years. Mania. And I'm, <laughs> I know her face. <laughs> I know. I know. My internet connection is terrible, so I couldn't tell if that was a frozen, but it was really funny. <laughs> nope, it was not frozen. It was just my, my heart was just. Alara <laughs> uh, and I have the reverse. So she has three boys and a girl. I have three girls and a boy. And it's pretty interesting, actually, to compare wow. notes on, like, high estrogen versus high testosterone content in the home. Um, but I would say that what I do notice is similarly, like my little two get along pretty much with everyone. My, my third, my second to youngest daughter is very independent and like kind of on her own. She's a Sagittarius. She's very like, I'm doing my thing. You can't bother me. <laughs> and my, my youngest who will be a year on Friday is a Leo, like party animal wants to be in everything with everyone, but just like very easy. My oldest two are high, high, um, intensity personalities very dramatic and they are each other's best best friends but they definitely it's also same as laria girl than boy and my son gets like irate that his sister is slightly i mean literally an inch bigger than he is and like slightly faster and more coordinated than he is or so they'll be racing and of course she can't like <sighs> win like it has to be you know an outright victory and what i found is actually that um they will get really angry with each other and there'll be a lot of screaming i'll hear you know I, again i try not i don't want to be the person who has to come in to fix it all the time because i don't think you learn anything from conflict that's resolved by like some hand of god you know i think that um you know it, it doesn't get violent i just let them kind of deal with it themselves what i have noticed is on occasion especially having spent the bulk of the last six months just with each other um i'll eventually say like okay you can't play together anymore for 15 minutes and by the end of 15 minutes, because it's now like removed from their, they're like, but I miss her. I miss him. It's very, I get very dramatic. But I, I, it has worked really well at their ages. It's worked very well to be like, imagine even in these 15 minutes that you didn't have your best friend to play with all the time. Mm -hmm. And very quickly they come back to, they come back to the ground. But I'm so, I mean, yours are what? Are they also like tw two years apart, each of them? Three years and three years. I have 14, 11, eight. <laughs> Oh wow! You're like, no, I mean, <laughs> 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 uh, and I, but you have you have you? girl you have you have two girls and a boy. Yeah, I have girl, girl, boy. See, but see, see, I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong, and maybe I'm being sexist because I just don't have that many girls. But like my boys, they beat the shit out of each other. Mm -hmm. They like, and then I get like worried because they're Baldwin's. So I get like very concerned. And so I'm like physically, I mean, I'm not, I'm not the tallest person. I'm like almost five, three and I'm extraordinarily pregnant right now. So I'm like literally like holding oh them God. apart as they're like kicking. I want to see it. I, Please. Like, will yeah. you, will yeah, you yeah, FaceTime me next time? I want to watch I'll you like, go. I'll like, it'll, it'll be like, you know what? We should just like put it up on the internet. Cause it'll be like great entertainment all the time. I mean, there's like feet involved where I'm like having to like put. Oh everything. yeah. It's, oh my god! It's, it's extreme. So I have to get more involved with some things, and then I'm like, "Use your words. We're not violent people." And and then I'm like, and my three year old today, I was talking him through like a tantrum, and I'm like, "So what are you gonna say next time?" And like the first is like, "Don't hit me," as I want him to say rather than smashing, like silently, just going and like biting or smashing. And then you come and you get me for help, and I will be there to help you talk through it. Yes. So I'm like, so, and we have this whole long conversation. He's looking at me, and he's like, "In my arms," <laughs> oh, and I'm like, "So what are you gonna do <laughs> next time?" I'm like, so say Rafa hits you. And he's like, I'm like, what are you going to do? And he's like, I will hit him really hard. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I think that's also maybe, again, maybe not like the right thing. But I think that's also, at some point, at least my husband's name is also John. My son, my son is John too. And he's like, at some point, boys don't listen when you're just telling them whatever you're telling. Like, it has to be like there's there is it's not like we're just gonna talk through this like you, yeah you, you, we need to, like we do these crazy I mean my dad used to set up like Oz Family Olympics for us all the time where we do these crazy athletic competitions it was bizarre but it was wonderful because it was a it gave each of us like something we could be good at and it was fun to do together as a family but it was intense and we do that now because sometimes it's just like energy release like I yeah, I had so many tantrums last night. I couldn't take it anymore. I had them doing sprints in the backyard and I would like time them running to the tree. Daphne, you know what I mean? Daphne's <laughs> there with the whistle. I'm like, <laughs> that, <laughs> we call it in my house, we call it coach mom. 
where if they just have energy at the end of the day, I take them outside and make them run laps around the house and then I make them do push-ups and I yell at them and I put on music and they hate it. But they but also kind of they also kind of love it, you know. Yeah. They're, like, they're like, "Mom, I'm so tired. I'm gonna go to bed just to like avoid having yes, to do anything, anything okay. but coach mom." Okay, wait. But before before I, our producer is telling us that we have to let you go, which is very sad for all of us. But I cannot let you go without your book recommendation. We we ask everyone oh, for good. their favorite things, but I feel like your favorite things should be kids' books because yeah. I'm desperate to know what your recommendations are. <laughs> um. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh gosh. Um, now I'm going to go blank, but I love, um, there's a book called, it's like the little people, uh, here's to you, which is a not very well-known book. Um, I assume you have like, you have all the Ada twist scientists. You have all of those, right? Oh, hi. Oh, wait, I know there's like a human. Hello. Here's a uh, gas mask on. <laughs> we, have, we have a wasp nest outside my window. Oh, so, um, oh, there yeah. you go. There you go. But if I'm suddenly dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are watching. We're not hanging up until the man with the gas mask it goes away. <laughs> oh, my God. We got you, girl. I mean, it's like, what the hell? Um, do you have like all the books like Ada Twist Scientist? Do you have all those? No, what is um, that? Uh, Iggy Peck Architect. No. There's a whole what? series of them. Your kids are the right age for those. So check those out. Oh, fun. Um, then there's a, there are a bunch of, there's a, a book author that I love, um, Chris Van Dusen. He illustrates, he's a big illustrator, but he has like, if I built a car, if I built a house. Yes. If, if I, I built a house. school. But he so also good. has ones that aren't as well known, like Randy Riley's really big hit. Um, which is great for boys oh, I and um, circus ship. Great, great, great. Um, I would also, anything Marla Frazee does, she's the illustrator, but she also did, she did this book that's like a real wish fulfillment thing for my kids called um, A Couple of Boys Have the Best Week Ever. And it's about two best friends who go to camp together. And it's really simple, but her illustrations tell such a story. She illustrated um, Seven Silly Eaters, for example, Marianne I, Hoberman's book. Oh, Seven Silly Eaters. I mean, wait, you guys I with love your- with your big families, it's about a family with seven kids and every child wants something different to eat. And the Sounds rhyme familiar. of it, the rhythm of it is really just a fun, it, Marianne Hoberman just like has really it, um, inventive bouncy rhymes. So it's perfect read aloud. Your kids are the perfect age. Every one of them will identify with somebody in this book and you will definitely identify with the poor mom. Um, <laughs> so that's a great one. Um, oh my gosh, I feel like I need to like sit down and make you guys a list. Oh, please. This is amazing. I, ha I had not, except for How to Build a House, I have not heard of a single one of these titles. I am so grateful and excited because I feel like we've read our, our favorite books a thousand times. Um, one last one. What was your favorite to read to your oldest daughters? Because we both have oldest daughters like when they were seven or eight. We, we just finished The Secret Garden. We're starting um, uh, a, 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 The Princess and the Goblin right now. Yeah. But... I still read to, um, my 14 year old finally will not let me read to her anymore, <laughs> but I still read to my 11 year old. We're reading oh. the, the Pearl by, is it Steinbeck? It's so dark. I cannot believe she, she set a goal for herself to read 20 classics this summer. And so wow. the thing she's reading right now, she's reading of mice and men. And I'm just like, Sarah, your heart is going to break. This is a really sad book. Lenny. But Lenny, but she Lenny. says she's doing it. Um, but it just gets better and better. If you, I mean, for me, that's like, it's the, I, I don't feel confident as a parent, but I do feel confident in my bedtime <laughs> because I have like jammed that they have to let me read to them. Sam and I are in the, um, in the middle of the sixth Harry Potter. I slow played so it as good. long as I could. And I finally, we just, I, we just have to put our heads down and get to the end. But it's, they're so, I've read them out loud now three times and they never get old. But gosh, um, Roald Dahl, you, your kids are the, your big kids are the right age for all Roald Dahl. 
if you can get through Charlotte's Web without crying, Charlotte's Web, all of Beverly Cleary, although mm -hmm. they move a little more slowly than you might remember. If you're going to do Little House on the Prairie, don't start with the first one. Start because her first one is like it's, a little it, slower. Start with the second. That is like the best advice ever. So I am reading <laughs> Harry Potter to my oldest one. And I was like, oh, it'd be really fun to also read little house books at the same time. I don't know why, but we just uh, decided. And then Alec decided to start reading little house books. And the first one, the woods one, Into the Woods. Yeah, Into the, the the Big Woods, yeah. And it's all about, she's like, this is a cooking book. Mm. And yeah. we don't eat meat. She's like, and it's all about meat. So I don't understand. This is really boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the first one is like, she was learning how to tell stories. So yeah, yeah skip ahead. And then once your That's kids are, love it, you go back. You got it. Okay, good advice. Because yeah. we just put mm -hmm. it away. We're like, okay, we're just gonna put this away. I was like, I remember reading this and loving it, and but apparently I was boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and where can we follow you? Oh, um, well, I'm I am on Instagram, I guess, and on I guess I'm I'm on Facebook too. I, I um, so I'm on Instagram. I think it's Jennifer Garner, because there's a period in the middle. That's a good dot, right? Jennifer Garner. Yeah, just look look for the one with the check mark and the many, many, many followers because there's always those <laughs> fake accounts that have like 300 followers. <laughs>